As we've been uh, tracking the earnings season updates we've gotten so far, only about 20% left of the S&P 500 to report earnings here. So far, been pretty strong. Uh, across the board, we've seen uh, estimates are passed by 22% in aggregate, 85% of companies topping projections. But our next guest says a return uh, to share buybacks and M&A activity could play a bigger role moving forward here. And for more on that, I want to bring on Michael Aroni. State Street Global Advisors, uh, U.S. Spider Business Chief Investment Strategist joins us now. Uh, Mr. Roney, could be chatting with you again. Thanks for coming back on. Uh, when we look at it, I mean, earnings season, you can look at it as we're getting strong beats, but not necessarily bigger pops on an individual basis. The market's obviously trended higher. But where do you put us right now and why should investors maybe be focusing in on what we've overlooked in an increase in share buybacks? Well, I think what's interesting here is that both investors and policymakers continue to underestimate the incredible recovery in both the economy and earnings kind of throughout this pandemic. So consistent quarter after quarter, the numbers are beating by wide margins and analysts are struggling to catch up. And so I think that's one of the key takeaways is that the numbers just continue to be incredibly strong. And one of the things that I kind of continue to point out is that there's a lot priced into this market. One of the things in particular is around the consumer. We're seeing a lot of those names and kind of the reopening trade perform really well today. But a lot of that's priced in, in terms of uh, we saw March personal income, savings, household savings, spending, retail sales, consumer confidence, all really strong. I think what's being underappreciated or unappreciated is that businesses are also influenced by the same dynamics. And their earnings and cash flow is incredibly strong. And I think it's going to unleash an incredible spending boom by businesses throughout the remainder of this year. Michael, when you talk about so much being priced in already, what does that suggest in terms of how much more upside there is? Uh, sure, analysts may be sort of scrambling to keep up with the earnings, but uh, it doesn't feel like investors are, have necessarily been impressed. Uh, we haven't seen the significant pops we traditionally would have, especially from uh, some of these growth names um, that we saw last week, the big tech names. Well, so I think what's interesting is that there is an element of things that are priced in. So you gotta, you got to kind of look for what may not be priced in. And I think what's interesting here is, as I said, with businesses have cash that's 30% higher than where it was at 2019 levels. It's actually 6% greater than peak levels back in 2017. And if we think about investors need to search for that catalyst, especially as you both mentioned around this kind of sell in May and go away dynamic. If you're searching for a catalyst, business spending could be it. So if you think about the ways businesses spend cash, capital expenditures, dividends, research and development, mergers and acquisitions, and share buybacks, well, a lot of those, if you look at the pre-pandemic levels, they remain fairly stable, dividends, CapEx, R&D. What's volatile is M&A and share buybacks, and they're both surging right now. So share buybacks are supposed to increase by 30% this year off of admittedly low levels. You have a lot of base effects because last year, not surprisingly, companies slash spending, dividends, uh, all kinds of stuff. But now, similar to consumers, they're going to spend like crazy. And I think that is going to be your catalyst to support these higher stock valuations going forward. Yeah. And obviously with financials, we saw that kind of mandated there by the Fed in terms of what they were able to do. Uh, but when we look at, you know, Apple would be a good example last week when we talk about the $90 billion uh, share purchase program there, uh, upping their dividend by 7%. But when you look outside, maybe some of these bigger names, uh, is it also a factor to be considering when we talk about this rotation back into maybe the small caps there? Uh, is it the same propensity and the same catalyst that would be there for some of these smaller companies to put cash to work? I think it is perhaps on a lower scale. So look, all businesses want to kind of strengthen their competitive position, you know, get greater scale, improve their efficiencies, whether they're large or small. I think the natural targets of this M&A are going to be smaller in mid-sized companies, but they'll also be looking to kind of um, grow, uh, gain operational efficiencies, um, get scale, look for global scale. So I think those things are kind of interesting uh, as well. But I think the natural beneficiaries to an increase in M&A activity will be small and mid-sized companies, value-oriented companies. And Zach, I think you mentioned it, kind of technology, healthcare, and financial services. 
I think all those categories are beneficiaries. The first quarter saw 1.3 trillion in global M&A activity. It's the largest quarter in M&A activity since the second quarter of 2007, which was only, was 1.4 trillion. So uh, we're off to a, a kind of a very hot start. And you even see the example, right? Microsoft a few weeks ago acquiring Nuance Communications. That's in their healthcare cloud computing segment of their market. So kind of those trends, the intersection of those trends coming to fruition. Yeah, and we got a $5 billion deal right here at home with our parent company, Verizon, to be discussing later on in the show as well. But Michael Aroni, State Street Global Advisors, U.S. Spider, uh, Business Chief Investment Strategist. Appreciate you taking the time to chat with us.